um, due to this lack of border, people tend to overestimate this. <laughs> like with the concurrencies, like everybody is building, oh, I'm building my small cache, and it blows up to one gigabyte. Of course, there is no control. Then another thing we learned hard over a lot of years is never assume some part is perfect. Per perhaps if it's going down to 30,000 lines, I just say, I know these 30,000 lines, but we are talking about millions of code. So, even the VM, it's a very complex business. We've seen that. Another thing here, and it goes in the direction of borderlines, trust, not trust. For me, basic operating system mechanisms are missing. So, type safety is nice. But why did we give up protection mechanisms? It's, I don't understand. I think we need it back. An application server is more or less really a machine. You're running processes. So we have that. If you, you can't kill a, a threat, you can't kill a process. It's a big thing. It's a big issue. And we are working on, on stuff like that. How can we bring that back to the Java world? And I think for us, it will be a good issue. <coughs> the last point here is really the non-functional aspects. They, from my point of view, really dominate the scenarios. So it's nice to know we have a garbage collector, but we need to know how it behaves. What is the runtime of behavior? And people are, have very strong assumptions about that. They are often then, if you go into another platform, they are not met anymore. Portability is going to be. So some ideas. I said it, we need more isolation for the different levels. Of course, if we need, if we have isolation, we need again sharing. It's always just sharing and messaging. Message. The non-functional aspects, that's really going directly to the specification of the environment. Need to be better specified. What are the performance ranges I'm living in? What is the GC behavior? What can I expect? We need more monitoring to support and more resource control. So, yeah, from my point of view, as I said, the VM as itself, as a machine, is not so controllable. It should be. It should be provided a way that I say, here is it. I can influence behavior, not on the command line. It's very important for us in the application server to do all the stuff besides starting the thing from here. So saying I, I need to tune the heap, I would like to not need it at all. So I would love to have VMs who do it themselves. But if I need to do it, I need it from inside. Okay, what's left? It's the last slide. <laughs> um, I think the one tool for all layers is still a pretty valuable goal. I see it. I often tend to forget about it about when I get overwhelmed with all these problems. That we still do quite more work, way more complex work, often too complex, which we couldn't do before. But as I said, it needs strong support for these layers, it needs strong governance. The dynamic extensibility you asked about, do you have that? It's a crucial feature. It's, it's a thing really Java brought to us that we can now do it before it was simply not possible. It's raking boundaries, but there are simply too many promises we have to make reality. But I have to say, I think the value proposition, the Java value proposition is, is still there. And I hope we, we make it re reality. Okay. All right. Have you looked at Aptimism and CLR, and <coughs> do they meet your needs in terms of isolation, or are there things we are missing there? Um, no, we didn't look in detail. Do you know about both the Java? <laughs> Java was really set. Does the isolates proposal? It, uh, 
Doug's been um, about the community. isolates proposal is uh, something we are looking at very uh, closely. I had some discussion with Doug because I say there are very different ideas going in there, and it's not clear which one will will be okay. the right one. Okay. SAP has actually been a very vocal member of that, mm -hmm. so there's a voice about it. Yes. Um, so I recall that APAC supported really tremendous scalability. This has been a, this has been a problem moving to Java. Ava provides the scalability by isolation. Every single task doesn't share with the others. Only on the operating system level, it's very <coughs> specialized functionalities, buffering, all that, but it's encapsulated. So every single uh, business application developer writes a single threaded proof. So if you don't share, you don't have concurrency. And then we have the mean that they are by themselves running in one server. You can scale on, yeah, hundreds of boxes. And this brings the scalability. Quick clarification question. When you answered previously that you just wanted two gigabyte heaps, was that the heap size or, or live data? That is the heap size. Do you have any idea what the live data is? Um, the live data, the user data itself is way smaller. We, so for, if you ask me personally, I would say we could reduce that probably so, to some, some hundreds of megabytes because most of it is caching and wrong caching. So we had one thing where we reduced memory use by a factor of 30 in three weeks. Um, Oh, okay, but this is the, so it's 100 megabytes useful, non reproducible data, plus some large amount of cache, or? Yeah. Okay. So <coughs> I, I would say in that it's perhaps <coughs> 300 megabytes of real user data. But as soon as we get the, the memory of the infrastructure down, we will use the <laughs> two gigabytes for user data, for sure. <laughs> so in the other world, uh, uh, we, we, have, we are working with very huge user data sets. Uh, both one can be very uh, huge as also we can have very, a lot in one server where which are smaller. And it's, yeah, we are struggling against that limit that the infrastructure which was built in a very heterogeneous environment is using too much memory. We are working on that heavily, as I said. Uh, we've made some progress in some components. Uh, so we will always stay in that, in that range, I'm pretty sure. Uh, about the non-functional uh, attributes, do you have a framework for specifying those at the ABAP level as well? Because then one could think about bridging those being requirements at the high level, which are then implemented by the lower level, we... We don't have that specified. The, the, the easiest thing is, the other virtual machine is very simple. It doesn't have a JIT, for example. Mm -hmm. and we discussed pretty often, do we need it? Now, always when this came up, people came, hey, you need a JIT. <laughs> Since it's a very CISC instruction set, it's a really rich operators. <coughs> Um, it's not needed. It will not gain us a lot. It's basically uh, moving data from the database into bigger structures and handling these structures internally. So we don't have that. So porting to different platforms is very easy and the runtime behavior between the different platforms is very, very similar. So for performance, for example, suppose you want to give priority to some business processes over the others. I mean, that's what I'm thinking about as not part yeah. of the non-functional attributes. Is that, do you have a framework for that? Or? Um, we have a framework, but a very rough one, by having different tasks processed by different agents. So if you have a batch job, it's simply processed somewhere else and then a dialogue step. If you have the, really, the task which really updates the database, is also done asynchronously in a special agent. There you can set priorities on one side by setting priorities on the operating system level, what we normally don't do. Of course it's too complicated for the 
for administration, or simply by saying, okay, you have more of these processes than these. And, uh, but it's a very simple scheme. And simplicity, I have to say, is, is key. It's really key. Okay, well, I'm in charge to get us to lunch, so uh, let's thank the speaker. <laughs> Just virtualized virtual VMs. <laughs>